What's up guys, my name is Jerry and today's video is going to be on the New Orleans Pelicans and we're going to be looking at how this team could have the perfect offseason and we're going to jump right into the video. Now the New Orleans Pelicans are in one of the best situations you could be in as an NBA organization and they have that rare opportunity to seriously compete in the playoffs while still developing their young talent and I feel like that's the dream of every NBA organization and when I look at the Pelicans I see roster stability for them. They have 14. They have 14 players returning under contract next season. They have stability in their starting five, stability in their bench, and then they also have stability in their coaching staff. Coach Willie Green had a breakout season as a coach last year, and he showed that he has a bright future in this league as a coach, and he also has some pretty good assistants on his team. So when it comes to the offseason for the New Orleans Pelicans, they're not going to make no splashy moves. There won't be any blockbuster trades and just because it was going to be a quiet offseason for the pelicans they have a lot of things to focus on like the draft growing internally integrating zion with these new group of guys and then also developing their young players i think that's what the new orleans pelicans are going to be focusing on this offseason and when we look ahead to the draft and we look at the way that the pelicans their roster is or um, constructed right now their front court is stacked. They have Zion Williamson, Jackson Hayes, Jonas Valanciunas, Larry Nance, Brandon Ingram. So they have a lot of guys in the front court. So when they look to draft, I think they should be looking to build depth in their back court. We look at, um, they get great guard play out of Jose Alvarado and CJ McCollum. And both those guys, both those guys are really relatively small. And CJ, he's a bit of a combo guard, so he could play the one or the two. Jose Alvarado, he's gonna play be playing the one a lot of the time. And the other guard left on this team that 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 saw some light on the court sometimes was Devontae Graham and I feel like last year he just regressed a lot compared to his years in Charlotte he wasn't shooting the three ball that well and other than that he wasn't really providing for the anything for the New Orleans Pelicans so I think they should look to add some backcourt depth and I think they I think they will definitely be able to do that with the eighth pick in the draft and I think they should be looking for a combo guard or a three and D guard with some size that can play that two position. And one guy that I have in mind that I think will fit perfectly with the timeline of the New Orleans Pelicans is Benedict Marvin. I really love his game out of Arizona and what he was known for in college was being <clears throat> a really great three-point shooter and he also made he showed the ability to make a bunch of different difficult shots and that could warn uh, <clears throat> that could make some scouts look the other way with the, some of the shots he was taking in college he could fall in love with taking those difficult shots sometimes but i feel like that's something that a young player will start to grow out grow out of once he gets um once he gets some nba experience and start to mature i feel like his shot, shot selection will get a lot better but benedict marvin could shoot threes from all over the place mid-range shots from all over the place no hesitation and then also that's not where his offensive game stop he can create for himself and create for others he can run the pick and rolls and read and make the simple reads and make passes and get his teammates some buckets and then also he could get to the rim he's sneaky athletic i've seen him catch a bunch of bodies in college and i think he's a, a well-rounded offensive player and then also so defensively we didn't see him as locked in as we would want to see him but he definitely has the skill set to be a three and d player in this league it's all about bond into playing defense and i think coach willie green we've seen how great he was at getting players to buy into his system last year i think he's going to be able to do that with every rookie he he would draft i think he would be able to convince them to play some defense so um, that's Benedict Marlin. There's a bunch of other guys. If Benedict Marlin, Marlin goes higher, there's guys like Johnny Davis out of Wisconsin, who's a really solid, who I think could come into the NBA and start off as a solid 3 and D player. And then of course, I think he has upside as well. And another guy that I really like is o Ochai Agbaji. I hope I said his name correctly, but out of Kansas, he's a six, he's a six, five, two guard with a six, 10 wingspan. And he has a really great ability to shoot the three ball. He showcased it in the NCAA. And then also he's great at moving without the basketball, running off screens, cutting to the rim. He's athletic and he's a really great defender. He showcased that in college. And the one thing that he could develop in his game is shot creating. He's not the shot creator that Benedict Marlin is, but I feel like with the way the New Orleans Pelicans with CJ McCollum, Zion Williams, and Brandon Ingram, 
they're probably not going to be looking at you no know, guys to come in and be able to create shots. So I think that's where their head should be in the draft. Find a combo guard or a 3 and D guard with some size that can play some defense and hit threes. I think that will give the Pelicans some much needed depth at the guard spot. And then next, of course, in the offseason, they need to re-sign Zion Williamson. I think we all know that they're going to do that. And I think he I think he should be offered the, the super max extension. I think Zion Williamson that, is that good. And I think the only hard part for the New Orleans Pelicans when it comes to that is how much of it is going to be guaranteed. Because to be fair, um, to be fair to the New Orleans Pelicans, Zion Williamson hasn't been that hasn't been that available since he's been here for the New Orleans Pelicans, and I definitely think he's he's worth the money. But it's the guarantee part that's going to come in question because he just hasn't. Um, you could we got to understand why the front office would be a little bit hesitant when it comes to the guarantee side of it. So maybe when Zion Williamson, when he shows to when he starts to play a little bit more, be a little bit more active, then that you know that part of the contract could change. But other than that, when it comes to a basketball talent he's definitely worth that type of money i think zion williamson we seen how dangerous the pelicans was in the playoffs last season they was on the brink of beating the phoenix suns and we had a guy like zion williamson zion he's so um to me he's so um he's such a, a unique player never seen no guy built like that like stocky as quick as he is and as bouncy as he is and my favorite part about his game is his, his ability to handle the ball and his quick first step i think those two those two aspects as aspects of his game are always overlooked by his uh, insane athleticism and his ability to dunk the basketball but i think he's really good at taking bigger guys off the dribble and blowing right past them and then when you try to put a smaller guy on him he takes him straight to the post and there's nothing that you can do about that so i think zion williamson adding him into this integrating him into this pelicans offense i think they're going to use him be able to use him in so many different ways i think you can use him as a screen setter for mccullum or brandon ingram in the pick and roll i think you could use um, Zion Williamson as the ball handler in the five out, kind of like what we see with Giannis or with a guy like James Harden. I think Zion Williamson has that potential to run the five out offense. I think we're going to see him being posted up. And then I think um, we'll see him getting out in transition a lot, running that break. So he's going to be a breath of fresh air for the New Orleans Pelicans. And I can't wait to see him out on the court with those guys. And then the Pelicans, now they could free up some cap space by moving two guys on their on their bench that's going to be really hard um like i said demonte graham he didn't like he wasn't as good as he was in charlotte and his three-point shot really regressed and that was his whole game so he wasn't really that effective for the pelicans and then um lou garrett temple now he offered a lot of mentorship for these young guys but he didn't really see the court and both those guys are making a combined 15 million so if the pelicans can move those guys and free up that cap space that'll be then it'll really be the perfect offseason for this team but that's going to be it for this video i think the pelicans need to just focus on developing these young guys and um integrating zion into the new offense with the new players and then focus on the draft and i think that'll be the perfect offseason for these guys if they can move lou garrett temple and Devonte graham so if you enjoyed this video leave a like comment down below if you agree or disagree and then subscribe subscribe for more weekly content we do this all the time man and that's curtains